All right, guys. Here's what's been uh, going on with us. It's time to spill the beans. And I think probably buckle up because it's been a lot and it is a lot and it's about to be a lot. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a behind the scenes, kind of pull the curtain back. Where we've been, what's been going on, what's happening right now with us and our boat. Basically, we are just so excited about what we're about to do. We're legitimately stoked and so we decided not to wait to tell you, which is potentially a bad idea. We don't even have things in our shopping cart yet. It's still in pencil. <laughs> so anyway, so that's gonna be happening. We'll give a little bit of updates on everything else about life and hopefully answer some questions. I have some questions for you. Oh man, he lost his umbrella. We're at the beach. Run, run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got it. Because his name's Forrest? <laughs> Probably. Obviously, we want to give you guys all the exciting stuff first, but after that, we're going to finally tell you what's been going on with us the last couple of months. A lot of you have been worried and sending us messages, probably for good reason. It's been a lot. It's been a little bit of a in, whirlwind. In the background stuff, kind of like the behind the scenes that we don't really usually talk about. Personal stuff, yeah. life stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We will, I mean, We'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll it. We'll talk about it. Uh, but first, the fun stuff. Brett's packing up because the beach is getting busy and the wind is getting worse. And I think we're going to head back to the boat so we can be a little more comfortable to kind of dive in. Okay, this is definitely better. Better? Is this on? We want to be able to talk to you guys. We're not really the kind of YouTubers who are good at talking in public. Let me just make sure this is straight. To get to the chase, we're about to undertake the biggest project we've ever done. And I'm talking bigger than... Ooh, I don't know bigger than rebuilding about in the beginning. You don't but think so? But we have a big project that we want to do, and it is something that we have been talking about for years. Just tell them what it is. A solar arch, dinghy davit, hard top, hard dodger, combo. All one awesome hardcore unit that can do it all, cross oceans, and just keep going. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that for the people who don't know what any of those words mean. We're on the sailboat. When we sail, we have our dodger. Our dodger is our windshield. It comes up and we look through the front, it's like the glass, which isn't actually glass, it's it's eyes and glass, which is a flexible material. Is it recording? I really hope so. Yes. And then above that, we have our Dodger like roof, which is made out of a canvas material, which has a zipper piece of canvas that attaches to our bimini. Our bimini is the canvas over the back that provides shade and rain protection while we're in the cockpit. Most boats that we see sailing around have a similar setup to us. It's it's Honestly, like we have a really good setup, but we've come to a point now where our setup is so old, it's about 15 years old, and the canvas is aging out and needs to be replaced. It, it has reached the end of its life, just usable life. Like it's just, it's just ripping. We're gonna lose this bimini. All of these seams right here are ripping. We're gonna have to invest money somehow. So it's either putting money into basically keeping what we have, just renewing it. Which again or, is a good option. Or upgrading it. Which, which is a really fun option. Which if you've been paying attention. We really enjoy the projects. <laughs> She's covered in epoxy. Do you guys want to see the design? This is draft 100, but it's not the final draft. Here we have it. Well, this is not, we haven't figured that out yet, but this is the general design. So now let me show you what our boat looks like right now. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. That was a different. Okay, so that's right now the current Bimini. And so then when we replace this with our hardtop design, it'll look about like that. So it's not much taller. It does extend back far enough that we'll be able to like haul our dinghy out and we'll get this hardtop enclosure. It'll be open in the side for air. We'll have a window right here, some solar panels. I think it looks pretty good. It's our dream project because it's going to be awesome for the boat, but also it's our dream project because we will have to build a lot of skills that we've been wanting to learn. And I think that's probably the bigger motivation to do it. We want to do it because we want to learn how. We love sailing, but I think at the heart of who we are, we're builders. I watched a Mike Patey video, which if you know Mike Patey, he builds airplanes. He's like my idol. No, he's pretty cool. Anyways. He totally is. He was asked a question, you know, do you prefer building planes or do you prefer flying planes? And he immediately said flying, of course, because I'm a pilot. But then, you know, he kind of did the mental math of how many hours he has spent flying planes versus how many hours he has spent building planes. And he kind of admitted, okay, I like building planes. I don't know that we're that way. We've definitely sailed more than we're we built. We're totally that way. I know, I'm saying we've sailed more than we've built. But we both enjoy the projects. We really enjoy the projects. 
the dogs are on deck. It's a good reason to do some things that we both have talked about wanting to know how to do. For example. For a long time. Brett, tell them what you're learning. Or relearning. Relearning, yeah. When I first started college, I started studying mechanical engineering. And part of that was computer aided design, CAD. But I haven't done it since way back then. And so when we started talking about this project, I was like, oh, this is a good excuse. So I'm relearning 3D modeling and CAD software. And I love it just for fun. So this is me playing, relearning a few. What was that? Oh, weird. The camera makes it look all distorted. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Maybe we should do like a screen grab. Yeah. So that's me That's me playing in Fusion 360. As you can tell, there's a long ways to go. And the next thing I think that we're going to learn how to do is lay up carbon fiber. Maybe. We're still in the design phase of materials and strength and structure. Why do we want to do carbon fiber? Well, I don't know. I feel like we mastered fiberglass layup with epoxy. We really know how to do that now. We could teach a workshop. But we don't know how to do carbon fiber, and that's like the next best thing. Brett has big dreams of building airplanes in the future, and so if we can learn how to lay up carbon fiber, that would be just such a really cool skill to have. It would be just cool in general. I mean, there's always there's so many things that this boat are like, man, I wish we could just replace that with a carbon fiber sheet. There's so many uses, and so we are constantly just like, wow, if we knew how to do that. So if you look, we basically designed it in a way so that it is basically the same height as our current bimini. It's really not any taller. Here, let me pull those. I'll show the lines. Guides. This line shows kind of the height of the bimini. And so with our new design, it's only like a few inches taller in the very back. And it might not even be that tall. We won't really be adding much height. We'll add a little bit of length to the boat because we need to for uh, to be able to pick up the dinghy. There's a whole lot of reasons for the whole project. One is to be able to lift up the dinghy. Another is to add more solar to the boat to be able to have better panels that are more efficient that are able to get more sun, better protection from weather. The davit and the solar arch is a pretty obvious upgrade because I've most cruising boats make that upgrade. It's a very good thing to do. The hard dodger though is something that is less commonly done, but I feel like as for, I mean, at least every single person that we've talked to loves the idea of building a hard dodger and having a hard dodger. We get waves that crash over the entire front of the boat and they flood those flexible panels. And that little piece of plastic is all that's keeping us from getting completely washed yeah, out by these we, waves. We have had some waves just smash into that um, Isinglass, that, that, you know, the plastic in the front. It's a humbling and it's experience. Just, bam, and you just see this wall of water hit it and go over the canvas. And you're thinking, wow, I'm glad that's there. And I'm glad it's still holding. And that kind of continues on to, okay, hard dodger. I think that almost any long-term cruiser will agree. If you can make it happen, that is a, a very good upgrade. So I think that one for us is kind of a non-negotiable. Yeah, thing. when people roll into the anchorage with the hard dodger, all the cruisers are like, did you see that? Let's yeah, go talk to where them. where they came from. <laughs> what ocean did they just cross? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty badass. We've been wanting to do this project for the last few years, but we decided after we repaired the boat and started cruising on it that we really wanted to live on the boat and actually be cruisers and actually be part of the community and, you know, cross oceans and stuff. Get some experience and some, like, firsthand knowledge before we started making any big changes to the boat. There's just so many things you don't know when you're starting out. And so we waited and we're at this point. And also, it would have felt like such a shame to get rid of a perfectly good Dodger and Bimini, a really nice one. Our previous owner got a really nice one with the full enclosure. When we very first put the boat in the water, we installed the Bimini Dodger full enclosure and it was amazing. On that very oh, yeah. first sail after all the repairs, I think we even put the whole enclosure down to stay nice and warm in Rhode Island. It's amazing. It's a super nice, I mean, he invested some money into that canvas. There are so many pieces to this. Like it's seriously such a big thing that I don't know where to even start because we have been talking about this for years. And so we've already had the conversations of, okay, if we do a hard top, that means we're gonna be putting a lot of weight up in the air. But also if we're taking down our bimini, we're getting rid of some of that weight. And if we do it out of carbon fiber, the weight might be negligible, but okay, if we do a hard top, now we have more windage up in the air. Okay, but we also have canvas that we literally never take down. We could put a lot more solar on there, but solar is gonna add more weight. If but we, maybe we should make our own solar panels out of solar, solar cells. Panels. And then, okay, if we get that many solar panels, could we get rid of our generator? Cause then we're actually gonna be lightening the boat 
and so many big decisions and little decisions. We're gonna have to figure out how to integrate lighting, but having lighting in the cockpit is gonna make uh, like the living conditions of the boat while sailing yeah, so right? nice Wait, to just be able to have like real lights that can light. turn red. And that can turn red and you have to, yeah, we, we, we've been hanging headlamps. Which is fine. And it the, works the, the, fantastic. But they swing and they kind of make you motion sick a little bit. I don't know if you guys can tell. This is going to be a, a very fun era for us. And we're definitely going to be publishing a lot of videos. Maybe twice a week. We'll see. The videos are going to be really close to real time. I'm excited to be able to be posting these and be able to get some feedback and input kind of as we go. The daily vlogging real time was such a cool experience for us. So being able to do a project real time with you guys. Not is... daily though. That's not, no. not, that's not set that. There's no possible There's no way. way. We're going to be way too busy building and we're going to be exhausted, but definitely weekly videos. That'll keep everybody in, in the loop. And we can give you updates on kind of how the curing has gone or whatever. Right. I mean, if you have done what we're wanting to do, or if your buddy has, or if somebody in your boatyard has, this is our email address. Right. Can you please send us pictures? Or, <laughs> kind of along those same lines. If you are or know of a good carbon fiber supplier in Europe. Yeah, somebody that you trust. Yeah, let us know. Or if, if you are a structural engineer and you would like to give your assistance. We're like really open to the idea of this being super collaborative. Next topic, uh, life update. I'll just let this, it. this past year. It's been a rough year for has us. Has been actually kind of a rough year for us. A bit less consistent posting on the channel. A bit concerning for people who've been paying attention. Right. Right? We hear you. We see you. Thank you. We get it. Yeah. yeah. So what's been going on? What's been going on? Okay, so last year, about a year ago, we decided that I should try going off of my antidepressants for a year to see if I still needed them. Frame of reference, think Guatemala. We've talked about it before, but Jade has a gluten allergy. But for a long time, we didn't know you had a gluten allergy. What'd you make us today? A loaf of bread. So good. She gave me a sandwich and I'm so excited. She had a gluten allergy that was causing her to have an autoimmune reaction, which was destroying her whole body basically. Oh yeah, which... my tendons were literally tearing. And even if you remember back to when she painted the boat herself in Rhode Island, I'm nervous. wearing like a knee brace and an ankle brace, an undiagnosed gluten allergy can cause an autoimmune reaction, which also can cause depression. Over the past years, we kind of came to the decision of well, now that gluten has been solved and pretty much all other symptoms yeah, feeling, are gone. Feeling good, right? we're thriving, my thriving, body's you're feeling able to, good. You're able to run now, you don't have joint problems. Life is good, very excited about this. <laughs> we thought there was a good chance that that like may said, have well. also resolved my depression. And so we decided to give it a go to find out. It's not good to take pharmaceuticals if you don't need them. There are side effects. We chose a really good time to do it and we gave it a try. And we decided to give it one year for me to fully balance out to kind of see where I was at before making the decision. So now we are one year later and I am fully medicated again. Starting like this week, I'm feeling back like myself again. And so now kind of able to talk about the last year and how it's gone. I filmed a video back when I first was going off the antidepressants, but ended up making the decision not to publish it. I didn't want to hurt anybody, I, like by mistake, by accident. It's such a nuanced topic. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of thinking to realize how serious the consequences could be. I have absolutely no business influencing people to go off of their their antidepressant medication. like Or uh, on, or any or sort of medical anything. Yeah, no, not right. need. I didn't want to accidentally lead by example to, like in the wrong direction, you know, at the time. And so I decided just to not talk about yeah, it until, which I think, until I knew. Which I think was the right call. And I was excited about trying to go off and I knew that would be reflected in the video. So then in the background the last year, I think the year kind of went fine. The year went fine, um, but it definitely, I would say before you went off, things were doing really good. We were we went off, we took a pretty steep dive. And I'm gonna say we, because it wasn't just a you decision. It wasn't just you did it. Oh no, definitely it, not. It was. It's a, it's a huge 
life-changing decision. It's not a willy-nilly thing. Right. So these were decisions and acts that we were deciding and doing. And it's we, and not it, just me and Brett. It's no. we, like the doctors and the rest and of family my support and group. Family and dogs. Right? We all made the decision together. We asked Penny, like, what do you think? Yeah. Things took a pretty steep dive and they climbed up and we were okay. You know, the Bahamas were good. We had a lot of fun in the Bahamas. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hard to not have a good time in the Bahamas, let's be honest. The Bahamas are situationally amazing. <laughs> scenes in my own head like what Brett didn't even get to see really was the reason things were fine was because I was trying really really hard for things to be fine I never woke up in the morning and was like oh I'm so happy that we're in the Bahamas oh I'm so glad to be waking up next to the love of my life oh I'm so excited about doing things I would wake up and immediately just like dread everything be like okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get out of bed today I'm gonna make it happen the grittiness and the determination to be okay did end up making it fairly okay we've had a really cool year and we've done so many cool things and it's been a happy year still like I've been happy but it's because I was trying really really hard to be happy. It was a lot of work for me. And an important thing to remember, like you could still be happy when you're depressed. Stop black and white. Oh shoot. What? Stabilizer's on on the camera. You turned it back on? Yeah. Okay, was, let's go turn it off. I was showing the... The we, internal we stabilizer def- on. on the camera sometimes shows you the movement of the boat and the boat's moving a lot right now. Here, let me turn it back on. I'm just curious. Oh yeah, for sure. They're probably too sick. It's an interesting thing and it's a hard thing to talk about on the internet. There's just some people out there that are just awful and they take anything good and shiny and nice and they do everything in their power to destroy it. And I have time and again seen creators be open and transparent and honest about their mental health struggles, but then... They get attacked for it. Yeah, and it's horrible and vile and it happens time and again and it happened it's what happened to lee which is why we've been really careful even though it's a really good thing and we are as honest and open I and mean, transparent as we can about to talk to people in real life about this any day of the week exactly like, we don't feel a stigma i feel like on this platform we've made a point to be really honest and vulnerable and and like real like we're real people who are coming on here and connecting with you guys who are also real people and it's been a really special thing but there's no way for us to keep out the bullies the the really horrible people like it's there's just no possible way on the internet i feel like i'm talking to you but then these these guys are eavesdropping and then they're gonna just be awful about it it's like it's like our phone lines are tapped i don't know like it's people who they're here and it's it just, it is. So we know that that's a possibility. We know that, that that there probably will be some negative repercussions, but things are looking really good. The clouds have parted, the sun is shining, Jade has passion again. Oh yeah, I'm we, we're, we have excitement again. for this project, Well, we right? should back up to me, like deciding to go back on the medicine. The year went by, things were fine, we survived it, but I've really learned what it means to thrive and to just love life. And I think everybody deserves that. And so for me, it was a pretty clear cut decision to just like go back on. But again, that's actually a really hard decision. It's not just a go back on and you know, the next one, it's not like Advil, right? Where you wait 15, 20 minutes, you take a nap and you're all good. For some people it takes six, eight weeks before it gets better. And before it gets better, it can get worse before it gets better. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Transitioning off and on of the medication is really really hard on me my lows get really low during that period of time and like, that's not a unique like that's no, that's I, I pretty think, typical I mean, I think. yeah if you like you read the yeah the warnings that's been the last couple months has just been us kind of trying to survive mostly it was me trying to not lose my <laughs> mind you know you think like a star wars battle where you're getting shot and you know, you know divert all power to the deflector shields something like that that's, that's what this was right yeah. it was all efforts all anything yeah. goes towards getting through this period which is what we've been doing so that's kind of where we've been why we're a little behind oh yeah and then we ended up um calling in reinforcements there for a little bit my mom came out as if there's anything that can get me out of a depressive spiral it's like mountains and architecture and sculpture and mom and mom <laughs> yeah definitely mom and and i got to see the david 
in real life with my own eyes, and that was fantastic. And we, one of you came up and said hi to us while we were in the museum. Which that was, was also cool. fantastic. So, what are the odds of yeah. that? So cool. Super cool. Yeah, we've kind of been underwater and now we're breathing fresh air again. Scientific experiment has been completed. My depression was never caused by an untreated, undiagnosed gluten allergy. It is just purely genetics. So thank you, Dad, for that. But now we know. But now we know. And we're back to normal and I'm back to feeling like me. I'm back to old Jade. I'm back to feeling creative. Excitement for life again. Yeah. You're setting goals and... You know, I'm feeling creative again. I'm excited creative, to be yeah. making videos for you guys again. I'm also feeling really lucky because now that I'm finally feeling like myself again and can dive in to like something I'm passionate about, which is making videos, I'm going to be able to tackle the Bahamas footage. We learned that we love hogfish and... <laughs> the, yeah, so what's left is the Ragged Islands. And so it's going to be like the perfect way to get back into it for me. I love my job. I love my life again. It yeah. just feels good. I'm really looking forward to making the videos and I really hope you guys like them too. I swear they're not really that long ago. I mean, they are kind of now. Just because we, we get lost, to the daily vlogs, I mean, honestly, we kind of like, burned I out. I really lost the we, last couple of months. Like yeah. the last couple of months for me don't feel like they really happened. But that's kind of a blackout. Yeah, the, again, these last couple of months were the worst before it gets better. Mm -hmm. Now that we're basically back full up and functioning we're 100%, back. we're both editing, Jade's editing. Coming up is Bahamas, but then after that, because we were making sure Jade was doing well and everything, that chunk of period is gonna go real quick and then it's gonna be project time. And hopefully, I mean, that's gonna perfectly line up with when we finally get materials in the mail and are diving into the project. So it's all working out in the end. Fortunately, we're really glad that life is working out. Some cool videos coming for you guys. If you know things about carbon fiber layups, if you that's wanna awesome. be involved in the project, send us an email. I'm gonna put the email in the description, I mean, it's just the expedition Evans at gmail.com. We're all about learning from other people's experience, and we know a lot of you guys have a lot more experience than us. If I end up making I mean, this project file work, in theory, we could share it and people could modify it and totally. use it on their boat if they want. Okay, since I have your attention, serious question. I have had the idea, and I've bounced it off Jade a couple of times, of starting my own channel. And I don't know what it would be called. I don't know exactly what it would be but it would basically be whatever I'm doing. So whether that's an oil change on the engine, learning carbon fiber, testing carbon fiber pieces, building an airplane at some point, it would kind of just be like my little space on the internet to, to play and make videos and, and do stuff. If you would be interested in that, leave a comment, let me know. And then also if that is something that I decide to go forward with, it needs a name. So. I feel like you're being really shy about this. I'll Brett, probably I'll probably start my own channel. Okay, Brett's been wanting to do this forever, and I keep trying. I keep being like, "You should do it. You should do it. And you should do it." I should. So, brainstorm names with me. What were some of those that we had earlier? We had like expedition. I, I said he should do like expedition engineering. Or expedition engineering. Brett expedition builds. Evans, or, yeah, Brett something builds. with alliteration. I don't know something yeah, cool. Brett's bravado. He has such a passion for this, and he has such a knack for it. And I think you should do it. Leave a comment. Let me know some channel names be like you saw that name and be like i want to watch that or like wear a t-shirt that says it or, or wear a t-shirt that says you probably not you know brett evans you, you probably wouldn't wear a shirt that says brett evans i don't wear a shirt i think if brett, brett can come up with a cool name for this channel he'll launch it he's thinking that this project will be featured on that channel in the super in-depth way like where we're, it'll give you a space to talk about the structural integrity and engineering and the layup schedule and kind of those like nitty-gritty details that are like more like your style. Yeah, Expert Evans has been a lot more about us and about our life and kind of how things are going, what we're doing, but it hasn't really gotten so much into, like for example, when we did the Battleborn battery upgrade, there was so much math that went into that and cable runs and gauge wiring and that's the sort of stuff that I think would be really fun to share. Uh, Super for, fun. Not for everyone, because I totally appreciate and understand that not everyone finds joy in that like I do. But a lot of people do, and those people are your people. Exactly. So if you're if you're my people... We'll, we'll let you know when he launches it. Yeah. So you can go subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's something else that's maybe in the back burner. And whatever that ends up being, I promise it will not detract from Expedition Evans. It'll just be bonus. It's extra. It's extra. Whenever we do... There's the name. Extra.
That's no, I'm it. just kidding. <laughs> Extra. Everyone's so needless to say, sad. thank you to those of you who are here, who stick, who are sticking around, to our patrons, to those who are supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. Thank you. We literally couldn't do it without you. And we will see you soon. Bye. Yeah, absolutely. Cut. Ciao. Just going to be my little... Something open-ended. My cubby hole, right? So it's not Brett Builds Boats YouTube channel. That just goes. That's pretty good alliteration, though. <laughs> BBB. Might be already taken. I think that's already <laughs> taken. <laughs>